So I'm going over the GDP GNP problem that's down in the doobly-doo. And the first step to these problems is going to be to write out the players in the problem and to figure out what country are they in according to the definition you're working with. So I'm actually going to start with GNP for this problem. And the GNP is defined by where the, who, who owns the com companies. So for each of these companies that's owned by a U.S. company, that's going to be considered in the U.S. And if it's owned by a foreign company, then I want to make sure I put, place it inside that company. And I'm going to actually draw borders between these places. So um, the problem says Taylor Electric. It's a US-owned company operating in Korea. So even though it's physically in Korea, since it's owned by a US company, this is going to act like it's inside the US. So I'll go ahead and put US up here by Taylor Electric. And then Samsung is a Korean company located in Korea, so I'll put a K here for Korea. AT&T is um, a U.S. company on U.S. soil. Customers are, of course, in the U.S. And Barrett and Company is a consulting firm owned by a Canadian operating in the U.S. So this is going to be in Canada from the perspective of GNP. So when I look at these, I can create some borders. Here I'm creating the Korean border. That's our little Korea. And here I'm creating the Canada border, so here's our Canada. All right, now we can actually start to trace what happens as stuff is being produced by these different um, firms. And so let's just go through the problem. We have Taylor Electric selling to Samsung. Now we're crossing a border, so this is either going to be imports or exports. And since it's going away from the US, from the US to Korea, Away means it's going to be exports, so we'll have an increase in exports of that $300 that they, they sell from Taylor Electric to Samsung. Increase in exports of $300. Now, anytime we have a company selling to another company, we need to think about inventories. And the big question is, do we need a decrease in inventories at Taylor Electric? And there's one thing that's going to answer that, and that is, um, did Taylor Electric buy any of these $300 that they're passing along from another company? In other words, have we counted um, any of this $300 in the past? And if we have counted it already at some point in the past, then we need to net it out by having a decrease in inventory. However, since it's the first time this stuff was ever sold, Taylor Electric created the raw materials and did all the work to sell it. They didn't buy anything from any other company. This is going to be, um, we're not going to need to do a decrease in inventories. And that's the biggest point of confusion for this kind of problem is when do you, when is there a decrease in inventories? And that only happens when we've accounted for some of that product in the past. So all we've got in 2011 for GNP is an increase in exports. So GNP is going to be $300. Now in 2012, we have Samsung, the Korean company, selling to AT&T, the American company, and they're selling that for $700. So since we're crossing a border, we know we're going to be either imports or exports, and since it's coming into the US, it's going to be imports. So we have an increase in imports, which we know enters negatively into the GDP. And we also know that we, act, we don't actually want to account for the value added by Samsung. So we need to net out this imports with something else. And that depends on who's, who the $700 is going to. If it's going to a firm, then it's going to be an increase in inventories, which is part of investment, of $700. Therefore, we have a net GNP of zero in 2012. And we like that because in 2012, none of these US players were actually creating any value. We were happy that we had $300 worth of value created um, in 2011 because someone in the U.S., someone owned by the U.S., um, created value. In 2012, nobody owned by the U.S. created any value, so we want GNP to be zero. Now, in 2013, we have AT&T selling to consumers, and they sell for $650. So we definitely have an increase in consumption of $650. And now we, since we're selling from a company, we always need to consider, do we need to net out any of the, um, the past inventory? And since we already accounted for some of the inventory coming from Samsung, we actually do need to net that out. 
of the 650 because not all of that 650 dollars was created in value by AT&T. Therefore, um, we need to figure out how much of this 700 do we need to net out. The problem says they sell half of that to consumers. Therefore, we have a decrease in inventory of half of the 700 and that's going to be 350. Therefore, our net GNP will be $300. And that's $300 worth of value added by AT&T. And this is value added for them during the sales, them during the promotion. They have this, this extra value added between when Samsung sold them the $350 worth of phones and when they sold them to the customers. Now, in 2014, AT&T sells to Barrett & Co, which is a consulting firm, so this is going to be investment. That's part of the capital of Barrett & Co is that these cell phones they're buying for their employees. And that is $850 worth that they're selling. And since we're crossing a border, this is going to be an import or export. Since it's going away from the U.S., this is going to be an export. Increase in exports of $850. And we always need to account for, do, we always need to ask ourselves, do we need to have a drop in inventories for something that was previously accounted for? And yes, we do. Since some, some of the value of those phones AT&T was selling was not created by AT&T, rather was created by someone else in the past, i.e. Samsung, we need to net out the stuff that Samsung already created. And so that's going to be a decrease in inventories, which is part of investment of the other half, the 350 in which case we have a $500 GNP in 2014. Now let me redo this problem except doing it for GDP. And for GDP what matters is where the firm is physically located. So for Taylor and Electric this is going to be a US owned firm that happens to be physically located in Korea. From, so from the standpoint of GDP Taylor and Electric is in Korea. Um, Samsung, of course, is a Korean firm located in Korea, since it's physically in Korea. That's going to be in our Korea part of our map. And then AT&T, we notice, is physically located in the U.S. Consumers are physically located in the U.S. unless it otherwise says so. And then Barrett & Company is actually physically located in the U.S. So when I draw this map, I'm going to make a border around Korea, and this is Korea and everything else is going to be the US in this problem. And then I go through it in the exact same way as I went through the GNP problem. So let's just go through this. We have $300 being sold from Taylor Electric to Samsung. What we're trying to account for is US GDP though, so we don't actually care about stuff that's being sold between companies in Korea. That's just value created in Korea has nothing to do with the US, so this is not going to count for anything. And we have zero components of GDP in 2011, and GDP is going to be zero in 2011. Now we come to 2012, and here we have Samsung selling to AT&T, so we're crossing a border, so it's either exports or imports. Since it's coming into the US, it's going to be an import. So we have increase in imports of $700. And anytime we have an import, we, we're always going to counterbalance it either with investment, consumption, or government spending. So here we have AT&T. Um, that's going to be a company, so that will be an increase in inventories, which is investments. So we'll have an increase in investment of 700, which nets out to zero GDP. That's GDP in 2015. 12, and we're happy about that because nobody physically located in the U.S. created anything worth of value in 2012, according to this problem. So we're happy that GDP is zero. In 2013, AT&T sells to consumers for, uh, for $650. So once again, this is very similar to the other one. We have $650 increase in consumption. And then we need to ask ourselves, do we need to decrease inventories because inventories were previously accounted for? And yes, we do. They sold half of their inventories to consumers, so half of this 700 is going to be a decrease in inventories of three, 350 is half of 700. And therefore, GDP in 2013 will be $300.
And then in 2014, we have AT&T selling to Barrett and Company for $850. So we definitely have that increase in investment of Barrel and Co Company of $850. And then we also need to ask ourselves, do we need to have a decrease in inventory for AT&T? And since we actually already accounted for some of that value before in the $700 worth of imports back then, we actually do need to have a decrease in inventories of half of that $750, which is $350. Therefore, GDP in 2014 is going to be $500. And that's the problem.